A picture is worth a thousand words, but a dashboard is worth a thousand insights. And after sitting in on dozens of board meetings and leadership meetings with clients, I found there really are only about 10 or so dashboards that you need to understand a business. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my favorite dashboards and any financial report that I share. And if you stick around till the end, I'll show you how you can get every single one of them connected to your data. Check the comments below. There's a link to get one of these dashboard templates for free. Let's go ahead and begin, starting with our first dashboard, this profit and loss over here. Now, if you're not familiar with what a profit and loss is, it allows you to understand your income accounts via revenue and other income and your expense accounts via your cost of goods sold, operating expenses and other expenses over here. And what's neat is it also will then summarize your profitability between your gross profit, net operating income, and net income. Now, this is probably the most popular financial report out there and is the way that you could understand whether your business is generating a profit or not. But there are a few things that are different about this report that I wanna highlight. First, notice how I have this as a condensed profit and loss. Instead of showing each and every single account, I'm instead summarizing all that information. And the way that I did that was I have a driver's tab that has every single account on my profit and loss. And then I just have a summary grouping column that shows how this information gets mapped back to my summary profit and loss. But there are a few other things that I wanna highlight. Notice how we have these custom periods, whether that is year to date, trailing 12 months, an annual basis, a quarterly basis, as well as a monthly basis. And what's neat about the monthly basis is if I scroll to the right, you'll see that my actuals for my accounting software ends here, and then my projections start there with this neat little dotted line. So this makes it useful to then toggle between any period. And generally, whenever I'm showing a financial report, I like to keep that between maybe 12 to 14 periods max. Maybe something like this that allows me to show just 2025, or maybe I'll even add in some custom columns. Now, if you're on the cash basis of accounting, this report is gonna get you probably 90% of the way there. But a lot of companies are on what's known as the accrual basis of accounting. And whether you're on the cash basis or the accrual basis of accounting, the balance sheet is easily one of my favorite financial reports because it gives you the context as to whether your profits are actually meaningful or not. So here we get to understand our assets, liabilities, and owner's equity, again, summarized between these summary groupings that I brought in from my driver's tab. Now, unlike the profit and loss, the balance sheet shows your values on a cumulative basis, which is why it's oftentimes called a snapshot of your business. And with those two financial statements out of the way, you get the third financial statement, which many find to be the most important, the statement of cash flows. And this is all about just tracking where exactly your cash is going each and every single period. And it's separated between cash from operating activities, cash from investing activities, and then cash from financing activities. Now, what's really powerful about a statement of cash flows is that if you have a three statement model, it becomes really easy to generate a statement of cash flows in this format by connecting your PL and balance sheet to it. And that's what makes this tab so powerful. You could actually stack all three of those financial statements on top of each other, showing your profit and loss, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. Now, whether you're reporting to management, to investors, the board of directors, almost always they're gonna wanna see these three financial statements. But those aren't the only ones. And before I show you some other reports, let me show you a different way that you could present these financial statements. So far, we looked at our profit and loss balance sheet and cash flows on a different time series. What if we wanna understand whether we're growing or shrinking between one time series or another? That's why we have these comparison financials where we could understand all three of our financial statements for the current period and how that compares to the prior period or prior year. Now. Like those financial statements, you still have your dates going across horizontally and accounts going across vertically. But here we have some other columns, the delta between each period and the percentage variance between each period as well. And what's pretty cool is over here, you can just toggle to let's say this quarter instead of this month. And now you could understand how you compare against the prior quarter or prior year. So this really helped shape the analysis that I give whenever I sit on a board meeting when I'm explaining what exactly happened and why exactly that's significant. And while these four reports are very useful, they also contain a lot of data. Sometimes you just wanna give a snapshot as to what is happening in the key areas of the business. And for that, I use this beautiful KPI dashboard where I could understand these eight key metrics, how it compares again against the prior period as well as the prior year. And just like in that other dashboard, let's say I wanna report instead on the 
year to date figures, I could just click year to date as such, and all that information will update. Now, there are a few things different about this report compared to the first four that we just looked at. In this case, the format is a little bit different as we have these KPI boxes rather than data going across horizontally and vertically like a traditional financial report. You'll also notice that we have custom formatting over here as well as conditional formatting over here in order to really drive home the formatting that makes this dashboard pop. And in case you're wondering how exactly I generated these dashboards, well, I did that with our tool, ModelWiz. Now, I'm a really big believer that your financial reporting needs to be in Excel because it's the number one software that finance professionals understand, and it's really easy to customize. That's why we built our tool so that we pull in all of your accounting data, bring it into Excel, and then give you the complete flexibility to do whatever you want with it. Each month, when you're ready, you can roll forward and we'll detect any new accounts and surgically add them in so your data won't get overwritten. Now, this is the tool that I wish I had when I first started my accounting firm, which is why we decided to build it over the last six years. And you can check out these dashboards and try it entirely for free at modelwiz.com. But so far, we've been talking about these five reports that really just tell us what exactly happened in the business or what exactly we thought was going to happen. How exactly do we bridge the gap? And that's what brings me to by far my favorite report, hands down. If there was only one report that I could show to the board of directors, it would be this one to showcase how much of a grip I have on the business. Of course, I'm talking about the budget versus actuals report. So here again, we have all of our information that we summarized across our profit and loss. And then I also have some cash metrics. And I'm showcasing now what we thought was going to happen versus what actually took place, and then the dollar and percentage variance. Now we also have these beautiful donut charts that showcases one color if it's a miss and another color if it's a positive. And there's one other thing that I wanna highlight about this. Notice how the variance column actually has different formulas depending on whether it is an income account or expense account. The general idea is that you wanna always show variances as positive if they're good variances and negative if they're bad variances. So in this case, because we missed budget by 50,000, I'm taking my actual minus my budget. For our cost of goods sold though, we actually spent less money, which is a good variance, so I flipped the sign. Instead, I'm taking my budget minus my actuals. Now there's one other thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing the percentage variance. You can't just take the balance over here and divide it by the budget amount. You need to instead use the absolute. And the reason for that is simple. Let's actually see what happens if I remove the absolute over here. And you'll see that now we get a negative percentage variance. But in reality, this is a good variance. So always wrap things around a absolute when using percentages. I also like to put it around an if error in case the value is zero, so we don't get a scary error flag. Now, the key with this report is not to show zero variances. That's totally impossible and beyond your control. But you do need to have a story for each and every single variance and understand what exactly was the reason that you missed or surpassed your target. Was it because of a timing issue or a lapse in judgment or maybe even an Excel error? Hey, I've been there, it happens. But the more details you have that shape your story as to what exactly took place and why that differed from what you thought was going to take place, the more confidence you'll build in these key stakeholders as you present your findings. And if you miss your budget, especially after a few periods, it may be time to do a reforecast because you don't want to get caught off guard and run into trouble with your business. And what's the number one trouble that you can run into with your business? Running out of cash. And that's why I love this dashboard over here, which will highlight in really big visuals when exactly we're projected to run out of cash. And if I want to, I can just change the trend to see how exactly our cash is moving by adjusting that input as such. And again, what I love about this is it's tied directly to my financial model. So let's say I want to showcase a huge injection of cash of let's say a million dollars in December 2025. Well, now if I go back to my cash out dashboard, you'll see that that bought me a lot of time until May 2026. Now, I've seen what happens firsthand when founders don't pay attention to their projected ending cash balance. They have to raise capital, oftentimes at a really nasty valuation, and it really causes a lot of stress. So monitor your cash balance and specifically when you may run out of cash. And probably one of the greatest predictors of how healthy your business is, is not just tracking your cash flows, nor is it just tracking your sales, it's tracking your margins. And that's what this dashboard highlights. Here, I can understand how much we did in revenue for this period, as well as the trailing 12 months, how that compares against the prior period and prior year, and then all the corresponding margins that make up my business. 
And what I love about this is I'm not just analyzing a specific period, but rather a trend of the trailing 12 months. But so far, all the metrics that we've been reporting on have come directly from our financial statements, or rather they're what's known as gap metrics, which stands for generally accepted accounting principles. These are pretty easy to put together because you really only need a proper month end close from your accounting team to generate that information. What about all those non gap metrics? Well, that's what I use a dashboard like this for. Here, I can understand my monthly recurring revenue and all sorts of other SaaS metrics related to my business. Now, like I mentioned, these aren't really so straightforward to put together. Oftentimes, you'll need to have a separate set of data related to your customers, how much you build them, which of those billings are recurring versus one time, and all sorts of other metrics. But together with your gap metrics, this can tell a really powerful story of how healthy your business is. And when it comes time to tell that story, you have a few options. Probably the most common approach that I see is to take snapshots of the information from these dashboards in Excel, bring them into a presentation tool like PowerPoint or Google Slides, and then send them over to leadership. But that involves a lot of steps. You gotta take the information from Excel, copy and paste it into Google Slides, and then if there's an edit, you gotta do all of that again. That's why I like to use this dashboard over here, where I could blend in information directly again from my financial model, along with any notes that I wanna customize. So here, I can include the key takeaways for how exactly to understand this report while still utilizing all the beautiful formulas that Excel has to offer. So while each of these dashboards can tell you a different story about your business, the key is to have that flexibility where you could easily pull in that data, layer in any projections, and refresh that data with total ease. This way, you can maximize your time on the insights rather than the manual data entry work. And if you wanna know how to build all these dashboards, I actually have tons of videos that you can find in this playlist right over here. So go ahead and click that button in order to check out those tutorials. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and leave a comment to let me know which was your favorite dashboard. I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I'll catch you in the next video.